Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit from God Amen. We started last episode, last two episodes, the, the fourth century, and we talked about Saint Athanasius and, and we dedicated one episode for his book on the incarnation. We will continue in the fourth century with three church fathers, Saint Basil the Great, actually three of them, they, they call them the, the three great Cappadocians. St. Basil, but St. Basil specifically, they attribute the title great to him. St. Basil the Great, St. Gregory of Nazianzus, and St. Gregory of Nyssa. Well, the reason why we're going to talk about those three together and after St. Athanasius, because they continued his work and he, they supported his uh, fight, they, they were three of the big supporters of his fight against the Arian heresy. And the three names are related together. Two of them were brothers. Two of them were brothers, St. Basil the Great and St. Gregory of Nyssa. And St. Basil the Great and St. Gregory of Nazianzus, or the theologian, as we call him, and we mention him in our commemoration of the saints in our liturgy. So, and, and we use his liturgy as, as exactly like we use the, the liturgy of, of St. Basil. So, St. Basil and St. Gregory of Nyssa are brothers. St. Basil and St. Gregory of Nazianzus are friends, best friends, very close friends. We're going to talk about their life first and because they have very interesting lives. We, when we talked about many of the fathers we talked about before, we said we don't have many details about their early uh, life. Even St. Athanasius, we have some or few uh, details about his early life, even though I, we had different accounts about his, uh, his early life. But for the three Cappadocians, we have, we have more uh, knowledge about their uh, early life. We know that St. Basil and St. Gregory of Nyssa, as I said, they, they are brothers. They are coming from a very wealthy family, rich family, well-off family. They had great education, especially St. Basil. He was very smart, very well educated. His parents were were Christians, and again, for generations, for the generations. We know that the father of St. Basil and, 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 and St. Gregory of Nyssa were, and, and their paternal, even their grandparents, were Christian. And they were taught by St. Gregory the Wonder Worker. Again, he's another name who is mentioned in our commemoration of the scene. He is the one who, who uh, evangelized and preached in, in the whole area of Cappadocia. The father and mother, the father and mother of, of St. Basil the, the Great were Christians, as I said. His mother, he, her name is Emilia. St. Basil has other nine siblings. And we can see how the family, and this is something I want I need to emphasize a lot how the family is very important and, and in teaching and, and, and raising kids in the piety and the knowledge of God. St. Basil was the, the bishop of, of Caesarea and, and, and the metropolitan of Cappadocia. His brother, St. Gregory, was the bishop of Nyssa. A third brother, he was the bishop of a place called Sabastia or Sabesta, and his, his daughter, his daughter was a, like a mother in, in a convent. She was a very pious uh, nun and, and, and leader in, in female monasticism. So, and, and she was a leader of a convent. So we can see how a family that has great parents would be very pious. 
and, and their grandmother, it's called St. Macrina the Elder, and she was also a very pious lady in the history of the church. When it comes to St. Gregory of Nazianzus, the friend of St. Basil, he's also his mom, was the reason to convert his father. Her name is Nona. And St. Gregory of Nazianzus, he said that she consecrated me from birth by her piety and her prayers. So we see that how the families play a huge role in, in the, 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 the lives of their, their kids. And we can see that one family has three bishops, a great nun, and the other family has a great saint. Not just that. Again, Nona, the, the mother of St. Gregory of Nazianzus, converted her husband to become Christian. Not just that, he became a bishop of Nazianzus. He became a bishop of Nazianzus. So I'm gonna focus now, but I, I give just screenshots of the two families because they share in common that they were rich families, the kids were very well educated, they are very pious families, and the, the role of the mother, of the piety of the mother. Now I'm gonna focus on St. Basil the, the Great. St. Basil was born in Cap Cappadocia. He was taught and, and he had his education in Caesarea, in Constantinople, and in Athens. And, and he met his friend, St. Gregory of Nazianzus, in Caesarea, and then later on in Athens. And by the way, that's a, something that's very interesting and very uh, relevant to our context and our youth. They, they were writing letters about when, when, when St. Basil died, St. Gregory of Nazianzus was, was talking about him and in his, in his funeral, uh, funeral oration. Oration means like a sermon or a word of, of uh, farewell. So he was talking about their early days when they met in Athens and they were studying in Athens together. And they were talking about how the, the, the environment of Athens, Athens is the capital of culture, of the, the education, the best, the, the best education, someone called it Ivy League ed education, using our terms. So in this environment, the best schools, the, the, the best teaching, in this environment, it was very worldly, very earthly, very profane. It wasn't a good a, a, a environment for someone who wants to live a Christian life. However, St. Basil the Great and St. Gregory of Nazianzus were very close, very pious, even in that environment. I think this is very le relevant to our youth who go to schools, not the, the environment is not very religious, is not promoting and supporting religious life. However, they should live as Christians everywhere and anywhere. And we have the example from the, those two uh, church fathers, St. Basil the Great and St. Gregory. After their, their life or their, their education in Athens, they go back to Caesarea. They shared an ascetic life together, and we can see how friendship is, is very important and, and how we should, as we all know that, ask me about your friend, I will tell you who you are. So, so friendship is, is very important. So they go back and they have very ascetic life, but they also, to live this ascetic life, they wanted to get the experience of the people who were living the monastic life. So St. Basil the Great visited Egypt. He visited Syria, Palestine, Mesopotamia to see the monastic life. And then he went back to Caesarea and he established like a, a monastery of monastic community. They were serving. They are saying about St. Basil, even though St. Basil and St. Gregory of Nazianzus were very close friends, they were very different. Friendship doesn't mean that we should be like each other. Pious life doesn't mean that we should be like each other. No, we can be very different. However, we, we love God, 
we can have a great relationship. Saint Basil the Great was a man of action. He used to serve, to lead. On the other hand, uh, Saint, Saint Gregory of Nazianzus was a very quiet man. He wanted a life of contemplation. He, he, he was asked to be a bishop more than once and he always withdrawing to go back to his ascetic, pious and contemplative life. So they were very different. So St. Basil, again, he after visited very different monastic uh, places, he went back and he established a community of, of monks and, and monastic life and ascetic life. And he put rules and, and he is one of the, the people who, and, and one of the church fathers who started to put rules for how the ascetics and the monks should live and, and he was asked a question, what should we do in the monastery or on the, our monastic life? So he was telling them, he was setting rules to the, the monks. Even though he was living with his mom and, and his sister on that place, but they were all living an ascetic life. At the year three, 364 AD, he was 34 years old, he was ordained a priest. Uh, in, in Caesarea under Eusebius of Caesarea, who, who was the bishop of Caesarea by that time, because of the Arian. Again, yes, the, 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 the Council of Nicaea was convened in 325 and now we are 364, but still Arianism and the Arian heresy is fighting against the Orthodox faith. So when they knew that that St. Basil is, is a supporter of the Orthodox faith, so they called him to be a priest in, in Caesarea. And he became a priest, and then he succeeded the, the bishop of, of Caesarea, Eusebius, by the, the, the year 370. He was only 40 years old. And he stayed bishop about nine years. He died very early, 379. So he has been a bishop nine years he died at the age of 49 he wasn't 50 even but he did a lot of things he was a great leader he was a great organizer and an administrator he established charity work he was also a, a great theologian who supported the nicene belief the the orthodox belief that was uh, established by the council of nicaea not just that he did liturgical reforms, he, and, and we have his liturgy, and it's one of the very common prayed liturgies in our Coptic church. We, we know that we use three, three liturgies, three text, texts in our liturgies, in our mass liturgy. St. Ba Basil the Great, the very common one, and St. Uh, Gregory uh, the theologian, who is St. Gregory, of Nazianzus, the friend of St. Basil. He is the second one who wrote this liturgy. And the third is the, the liturgy of St. Cyril, which is originally has been written by St. Mark the Evangelist, as our tradition tells. So these are the three. So two of them are written by two of the three great, of the three great Cappadocians, uh, or Cappadocian fathers, St. Basil the Great, than Gregory of Nazianzus. When, we, when it comes to the writings of Saint, Saint Basil the Great, he had, as I said, rules for ascetic life. He has a very important uh, book on the Spirit, on the Holy Spirit. And we're gonna see that by 381, another heresy started to show up that of Macedonius who, who denied the divinity of the Holy Spirit. That's why we're gonna see that St. Basil the Great, St. Gregory the, the, the theologian, or the St. Gregory of Nazianzus, he both wrote books, and even St. Gregory of Nyssa, three of them, they wrote about the Holy Spirit. St. Basil died before the Council of Constantinople, where Macedonius was excommunicated because of his heresy against the Holy Spirit, he, so he died before, but 
the other two, Gregory, St. Gregory of Nazianzus and St. Gregory of Nisa, both of them attended the Council of Constantinople. And the three of them wrote about the Holy Spirit, very important writings about the Holy Spirit. So when we go back to St. Basil the Great, he has rules on the ascetic life, he has on the Holy Spirit, he has a, a, also an important book about, it's called the Hexameron. We know that Hexa is a prefix of any, any of the number six. So hexagon is a, a geometric uh, shape of six sides. Hexameron is the, the six days of creation. So it was a, a very uh, important book as well. And his liturgy and 368 letters. Personal letters, some of them, very few of them, he received from other bishops or other individuals, and the other letters are sent by him to other bishops and, and friends and, uh, and uh, individuals, and they, they have very valuable information on, on these letters. So I'm gonna, he, one of the things that was all, also on, on the focus of the interest and concern of, of St. Basil the Eucharist. And, and he himself, he was a very pious man, and he was saying, it is good and beneficial to communicate. Communicate here means take communion. It is good and beneficial to communicate every day and to partake of the holy body and blood of Christ. For he distinctly says, he that eats my flesh and drinks my, my blood has eternal life. And who doubts that to share frequently in life, share to take from the body of blood of Christ. And who doubts that to share frequently in life is the same thing as to have manifold life. I indeed, he's talking about himself, I indeed communicate four times a week. So this is uh, the reason why I, I, I brought that quote from the writings of St. Basil because it's, this tells us why the Copts are attending liturgies. And we have in our churches many lit liturgies throughout the week and definitely on Sunday. But we, we encourage all the people, all the Copts, and to come and take communion. St. Basil himself, he's talking about himself. He's saying, I indeed communicate four times a week. On the Lord's Day, Sunday, on Wednesday, on Friday, and on the Sabbath, on Saturday, and on the other days, if there is a commemoration of any saint, uh, there is other uh, translation saying of any martyr. So in the feasts or the commemorations of the martyrs or the saints, he would add to those four, but his standard, his standard uh, uh, attendance of liturgy is four times and taking communion four times a week. The other figure of the, 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 the three great Cappadocians is St. Gregory of Nazianzus. As we said, he had good education like, like St. Basil. And again, as we said, he was different. He was um, withdrawing from the public service, not because he didn't want to serve, not because he wasn't dedicated, but because he wanted to keep his uh, contemplative life, his ascetic, his ascetic life. He attended the, the, the Council of Constantinople and he, he was also known for how eloquent he, he, he is. He has great orations and he wrote five orations. Oration, again, it's like a speech. So he wrote five orations. He gave five orations. They are, they are called the five theological orations. He gave many or other orations, but these are very famous. He gave in Constantinople when Arianism was very uh, strong there. So he went to defend the, the, the Orthodox faith uh, 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 and the divinity of Christ. And his fifth theological oration was about the Holy Spirit. And, and because of these five theological orations, he was given the, the title of St. Gregory the Theologian. So he can be said St. Gregory of Nazianzus because he's, he comes from Nazianzus, 
and where his father was a bishop and he later on was helping his father and and after even his father passed away he was taking care of the 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 diocese and he is given the the title of saint gregory the theologian that this is how we we we, we mention him in uh, the commemoration of the saints in our liturgy in our coptic uh, liturgy as we said he has a liturgy also and and we use it in the the feast of the coptic church and we use it every day we can use it every day the last the third of them quickly because the, the, the limited time we have in this episode, we, he didn't have the, the as good of education as his brother, uh, St. Basil, or the friend of his brother, St. Gregory of Nazianzus. However, he was influenced by his, his uh, sister, St. Macrina, and he wrote her biography. He, he wrote her uh, life. The life of St. Macrina is written by him. He wasn't a leader as much as his brother, St. Basil the Great was. And by the way, he was, he was ordained bishop on the, the city of Nisa uh, by his brother, St. Basil. But after the death of his brother, he started to feel the responsibility of fighting against the Arian heresy and against the heresy of Macedonius who denied the, the divinity of the Holy Spirit and he attended the, the Council of Constantinople. So he, his writings and his contribution to the church became stronger after the death of his, of, of his brother St. Basil. Maybe because he felt when, when St. Basil was there, he was relying on him because he was saying about his brother that our father, St. Basil, our father, he was considering his brother, his older brother, as a father because this can tell us the influence of, of St. Basil the Great. However, after he, the death of St. Basil, as we said, St. Gregory of Nyssa started to take the, uh, a more leading role in the church. I'm going to conclude with his writings. He he wrote uh, the li he wrote about uh, uh, the scripture uh, exegetical works. So he wrote the life of Saint Moses. He wrote uh, a commentary on the the book of the Song of Songs on the Beatitudes, and he wrote the life of Saint Macrina, and he wrote some writings to uh, about the Holy Spirit to uh, uh, to present it in the council of nicaea and what he wrote and what he presented in the council had a great uh, contribution to the decree of of uh, shaping the the amendment or the the continuation of the the the, the, the creed of nicaea so nicaea we had the first part about the divinity of christ and then Yes, we believe in the Holy Spirit. The second part of the, the, the creed was written and decreed in the Council of Constantinople uh, 381 AD, where St. Gregory of Nyssa and St. Gregory of Nazianzus were present and contributed in this uh, council. Great fathers, we need to, to know more about them, to read uh, uh, about them and read their writings and again, two of them, we use their text in our Coptic liturgy. May their uh, prayers be with us and glory be to God forever. Amen.